So I wanted to put together this short video to show you uh, the advantages of using OBS as a virtual camera uh, within Zoom and just the kind of flexibility that it gives you. Um, so this was the main view that people saw uh, of me during Studio 20. Whenever I turned my camera on, this is what they saw. Um, because we're coming into Zoom as a virtual camera, I'm able to push uh, the, the signal from OBS into Zoom and, uh, and have this kind of more rich visual environment. So in this scene that you're seeing, um, we've got me uh, isolated here with some branding around me. Um, I've got a little, um, uh, what's called a Chiron down here at the bottom, which is my name and my contact information. I've got some slides here on the right, and I'll show you that in a moment. And you can see I've got some white and black uh, background going on here. Um, part of the reason I'm able to isolate myself without showing a background um, is because I have a green screen. And so um, if I didn't have, uh, and I have a, an OBS filter to, act, to activate the green screen, it's called chroma key. And if I turned that off, you would just see the green screen background behind me. And if I actually pull this green screen down, you'll see what's hiding behind the screen, which is my treadmill. <clears throat> which is a bit distracting. So that's one of the advantages of having a, a green screen. Um, so uh, as I said, I've got PowerPoint slides right here. Um, I'm running PowerPoint on a second monitor and I'm running it in reading mode. So I'm not running it as a presentation. I'm running it within reading mode, and that gives me a lot more control over how much screen real estate it's going to take on my screen. So, you know, when you run a PowerPoint in presentation mode, it's actually built for, for presentations that happen at a podium. Um, so it tends to take over screens uh, quite aggressively, which, you know, I, I want to try to maintain as much screen real estate because I got a lot of things going on here on the screen. So I run it in reading mode and I make it quite small on the screen. Uh, and that still gives me the ability to, to run slides, but it's kind of like tucked away in a corner of my screen. Um, if I want to, I have a second scene that will allow me to take those um, slides with a click of a button and make them full screen for everybody to see. So if I want to have the emphasis on the slides, I'm able to, um, to do that. And then if I want to switch back, I can just click the switch back button and it brings it back to me here. So those are two of the main uh, scenes I used. Um, I also had a scene where um, uh, that I use during breaks that has an embedded SoundCloud player. I built a SoundCloud playlist built with some Creative Commons licensed music. And I also stuck a timer on there just to let people know when we were going to be back from a break. So that's what that looks like. And I'm able to adjust the volume of the SoundCloud. And I still have my mic going, so if I want to make an announcement, I can. So that gives me quite a bit of flexibility. Uh, and the last screen that I have is this one here. Uh, and this one, I've replaced the PowerPoint presentation with a built-in web browser that OBS has. Um, and what you're looking at here is a view into uh, EventMobi, which was the event platform that we were using um, for the event. And we had this game going on. So every once in a while, I wanted to check in on the leaderboard and see who was leading and who was uh, winning the contest. So I had built this screen as well. Um, that just looks at uh, just that one specific web page so I can check in on the leaderboard for the contest. And so you can see I can really quickly transition very seamlessly. You're not losing any of my audio. I'm still able to talk, uh, and, but I'm having a much more rich environment than just sharing PowerPoints and my video camera using uh, OBS.